My name is Christiana. I'm a 36-year-old housewife juggling part-time work and raising two kids. Life's generally good, but I often find myself frustrated with my husband Billy, who's the same age and works a corporate job. For some reason, Billy always seems to prioritize his mother over our family. If she asks him to help her with her garden on a weekend we had plans, he will change them in a heartbeat. Even on days we were supposed to visit my parents, he would suddenly decide to go shopping with his mom instead. For our child's birthday, he rejected the character cake our kid chose, opting for a fruit tart his mom said was delicious. She said kids need to eat lots of fruits to get their vitamins, he would argue. I would often confront him later especially when I saw our disappointed child's face. His mother might seem like a loving grandma who adores her son and grandkids, but she clearly enjoys the attention and superiority she feels when Billy prioritizes her. Even if it means our child gets hurt, she would just smile and say, Sorry, dear, grandma's fault. She sometimes acts condescending towards me, making it hard to hear others praise her as a good mother-in-law. Ever since his father passed away, Billy has been spoiling his mother even more and her attitude has only grown. Amidst all this, our 10th wedding anniversary was approaching. How about a nice dinner at a restaurant for our 10th anniversary? We can leave the kids with your mom or my parents, I suggested. Sounds good. Uh, let's book a fancy place. Remember that restaurant that was on TV? We decided on a high-end restaurant we wouldn't typically visit. Billy seemed excited and quickly called his mom to watch the kids. I was looking forward to our special day, even though it was still two months away. On our anniversary, I was getting nervous. Billy, who promised to come straight home from work, was nowhere to be seen. I kept thinking he might have gotten held up or maybe he forgot, but he did mention it in the morning. I couldn't reach him or his mother. Who was supposed to watch the kids? In desperation, I called his office. A woman answered and quickly told me he had already left. I thanked her and hung up, wondering why he couldn't just call. Our kids who knew about our plans kept glancing at the clock clearly worried. I couldn't take my eyes off the ticking clock. The person who answered the phone right before I called the company earlier should be able to come home already since I went there by bicycle this morning. In this way, I continued to wait for Billy until the very last minute, but it's already at its limit. Our reservation was for 7 p.m. and it was almost time. I called the restaurant to inform them we would be late. Your party is already here, the hostess said. Um, by himself? As I mentioned earlier, you're already seated with your guest, the hostess said. Um, who came with him? A man in business attire and an older woman. Excuse me, but are you? I quickly replied. My mistakes, sorry, and hung up. An older woman? Could it be? I immediately called Billy. When he finally answered, he sounded quite annoyed. What? You've been calling non-stop. Where are you? You're not at the restaurant, are you? Yeah, I'm here. Mom really wanted to eat at this place, so I decided to dine with her tonight. We can celebrate our anniversary at that family diner over the weekend. You love their baked rice dish, right? It was indeed his mother. Knowing it was our anniversary dinner and still joining him was audacious of her, but Billy, who took my seat without a word, made me feel more than anger. It was disgust. And to think he knew how much I had been looking forward to this for the past two months, suggesting a local diner as a replacement, it was clear where I stood in Billy's priorities. Oh, uh, since the kids will miss out on grandma's cooking tonight, make sure to cook them something they like. Thanks. He added. Oh, hold on. I tried to keep him on the line. My parents gave us gifts for our 10th anniversary. They even said they wanted to hear about our dinner. Uh, gifts? Your parents always send stuff I don't like. Just toss anything that's not cash. Billy suggesting to throw away heartfelt gifts from our loved ones, I tried one last plea. Are you sure about that? You might regret it. Billy sounded puzzled but didn't change his mind. Oh, regret? Nah, just keep the cash. Oh, our food's here. Don't call again. Bye. 
I sighed as I hung up, noticing our kids looking worried. Who's up for helping me make dinner? Their enthusiastic hands shot up, lifting my spirits. After dinner, I sorted the gifts as Billy had instructed. Cash aside, everything else was to be discarded. Keep the cash and get rid of the rest. I felt ashamed and sorry for the people who had given us those gifts. How had I put up with such a man for 10 years? By the time I put the kids to bed, Billy was home. Don't you think it's a bit much to prioritize your mom even on our 10th anniversary? I was the one who suggested the dinner, and you knew how much I was looking forward to it. You could have dined with your mom any other day. Yeah, yeah, don't be so dramatic. I told you I would take you to the family diner. I'll even pay half from my allowance. That's not the point. You dismissed everyone's gifts for our anniversary. Enough already. I have work tomorrow. Can we just go to bed? Billy didn't want to discuss it further. After a quick shower, he went straight to sleep. The next morning, I thought I would give it one last shot. Uh, about the anniversary gifts? Billy, with a clearly annoyed expression, ignored what I was saying and left the living room. Without a word, he seemed to have gone to work. Still upset from the day before, I decided that I had done enough and given him plenty of chances after seeing his attitude. After sending the kids off to school, I received an urgent call from Billy within just three hours. I answered, thinking he called sooner than expected and Billy started speaking in a panicked tone. Hey, who did you get that gift you mentioned yesterday from? Um, like I said, from my parents, we also got some from friends, your boss Cyrus, and uh, even the president. What? You, you never mentioned? I did. I told you it was a gift from my parents. Parents? My father has been friends with Billy's boss and the president for years, and our family have always been close. The two of them, who have treated me like family since I was little, had come over the previous evening to give us their gifts. The watch the president chose is so fancy even I know about it and the wine Cyrus brought looks delicious but it doesn't matter now, right? You said to throw away anything that wasn't cash, so I did. What have you done? Do you even realize what you have done? Billy was furious but I wondered on what grounds he was complaining. I tried to confirm with you if it was really okay and I tried to talk to you when you came home. And again in the morning. You ignored me, Billy. Don't shift the blame. It's your fault for not listening. I hung up on him. Billy kept calling back, but I ignored all his calls. I might seem childish, but I couldn't contain my anger anymore. When Billy came home, I could hear his heavy footsteps from the entrance as he stormed into the living room. Enough is enough. Give me the gifts now. I told him I had thrown them in the morning thrash and they had already been collected. Billy, angrier than I had ever seen him, shoved me and stomped on the floor. Unbelievable! Can't you tell right from wrong? You knew it was our anniversary dinner, yet you went to a restaurant with your mother? And then telling me to throw away the gifts without even looking at them? I question your sanity. I confronted the yelling Billy. Throughout our heated argument, Billy kept insisting that I was the one in the wrong. You threw them away, so you apologize to them. I've already told everyone at work, so there's nothing we can do now. My anger exploded at Billy's selfish reasoning. Oh, really? Then I would like to apologize directly. Can you ask them to come here? What? What are you? Billy was visibly shaken by the words not meant for him, especially when he saw the door to the adjacent room open. He grunted in surprise as he faced his boss and the president, who had emerged from the other room. The two of them, having heard Billy's side of the story, found my actions quite out of character and had called to hear my side as well. I decided to tell them everything, including the fact that I had called your office while waiting for Billy to come home. After hearing my explanation, they felt bad that their gifts had caused a misunderstanding between us. They asked to hear our story again, so I invited them over. However, seeing how agitated Billy was when he got home, I asked them to wait in the next room to let him calm down. 
Billy, consumed by anger, didn't seem to notice their presence. Oh, um, Mr. President, I I'm sorry. Finally, realizing the situation, Billy turned pale, bowed deeply, and apologized to the two of them. He must have realized that he couldn't deny the story I had just shared, especially after trying to pin the blame on me. His previous anger was gone, replaced by deep remorse as he trembled. Lift your head. The president's voice was surprisingly gentle. Hope flickered in Billy's pale eyes. This is a domestic issue, unrelated to work. I won't reprimand you as the president. Yes, added his boss. It won't affect your job performance, but remember, we have been friends with Christina for a long time. We would prefer to keep our distance from you personally from now on. Billy, who had often boasted about his close relationship with them outside of work, looked devastated. How could you? And you, say something. Aren't you embarrassed to involve others in our marital spat? This isn't just a marital spat. You mishandled the gifts we received and as a result you lost their trust. And honestly, I don't need a husband who prioritizes his mother over his wife and family and even tries to blame his mistakes on me. I'm filing for a divorce. I declared confidently and left the house. Glad that I had sent the kids to my parents' house earlier. Rumors spread at Billy's workplace about our divorce and his changed relationship with his superiors. His colleagues, whom he had once looked down upon, now mocked him for not being able to even chat with his bosses without a wife by his side. After the divorce, he saw our kids once a month while paying child support. But he kept complaining about the money and tried to guilt trip the kids into living with him again. As they approached their teens, they started to resist seeing him. Now, respecting the kids' wishes, we have temporarily stopped their visits. When dad cared more about grandma than us, I realized we don't need to live with him. My daughter once told Billy. I still laugh thinking about his reaction. After declaring the divorce, I returned the gifts which I had secretly kept to the president and Cyrus, apologizing for the trouble. They accepted them and Cyrus even jokingly gifted me my favorite wine as a divorce gift. I believe our relationship with them, including my parents, will continue. Later, after the divorce was finalized, I was invited to a home party at the president's house with my kids. There, I was offered a job at a company run by the president's brother. Ignoring all of Billy's annoying attempts at reconciliation, I now work in a supportive environment and the three of us live happily.